Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. So today we're going to be talking about not one, but multiple new properties that we're listing in a new subdivision that we have never previously before bought, listed, or sold land in. The name of that subdivision is Estancia Ranchettes. It's in Torrance County. And we've started buying out there because we believe it has many similar characteristics to other subdivisions that our buyers tend to be really interested in and that we've had a lot of success in the past. Those characteristics, by the way, are what you see enumerated in the headline here, RV-friendly land with relaxed zoning. Now, how friendly, how relaxed, I'll get into that later in the video. But the point is that we're making an effort to start buying in this region, and if you guys like it, we'll buy more. If not, we won't. But we believe that these will... Uh, appeal to those of you who come to the website all the time looking for properties that are basically what we like to call the leave me alone land, okay? The land that has more privacy than neighbors, the land that has more wide open spaces than it has prying eyes. Now, of course, there's a trade-off with property like that. Usually utilities are, are scant to barely existent in the region. Estancia Ranchettes is no exception. There are not a lot of utilities out here. Uh, additionally, uh, because the county has kind of largely forgotten about it. The roads are not wonderful out here. You can get around, certainly. It's not that difficult, but the point is that they're not paved roads. They're not well-maintained dirt gravel roads. They're kind of just bladed dirt roads. And I'm saying all this at the outset of the video because I want to make it very clear who this land is for. This land is for people who do want to go and RV camp for longer periods of time. They can do that in other parts of the state. People want to build a, a you know, put down a, a trailer, a, a mobile home, a modular home, etc., that's who this land is for. So if you're looking for some great investment property that you can buy and sell for three times as much five years from now, this is not that, okay? Additionally, if you're looking for a place in New Mexico where you're going to build your dream home or you take out a half a million dollar loan and you start construction on your new house, this too is not that. The few homes that exist in this region are largely what I just described, mostly mobile homes, uh, trailers, so on and so forth, okay? Anyway, with that said, guys, this video is going to cover uh, everything that we know about Estancia Ranchettes. It's not going to be property specific. It's going to be subdivision specific, and it will be posted on all of the lots that are within the subdivision. Now, quick thing, guys, as we always like to provide, we have here the master list spreadsheet. We do this with all the subs where we buy a lot of land. Right now, we've only got nine properties out here. We'll see how these perform. But the point is, if you are really interested in this region and you want to kind of compare and contrast these lots, the best way to do it is to come to the spreadsheet Start here on the GPS coordinates column, click any one of these, it'll bring the property up on a map, it'll show you exactly where it is. When you find one that interests you, you can come over here, click the reference number, and be taken to that exact listing page. Other columns within this spreadsheet include um, some you know, notes here about the roads, about the power situation, about the cell reception, the total acreage of the property, the sale price, the terms offered, and then we have buy now buttons over here which you can click to purchase the property either for cash or for the financing option. I will let you explore that all on your own time. Point being, the spreadsheet exists and it's there as a help to all of you guys. With that said, let's pull these properties up on a map and show you guys exactly where the subdivision is. So as with all of our listings, come down here, click the GPS coordinates or click them right here on the spreadsheet and it will bring the property up here on the Google Maps. So first off, for those of you not familiar with Torrance County, Torrance County is a massive county, occupies a lot of land just to the east of Albuquerque. So you have Albuquerque up here in the north central part of the state, and then you have Torrance County over here. Let me go to map view. Over here, going from roughly Edgewood down past Mountain Air, over this way, up past Encino, and then back this way. It's kind of a squarish county that takes up a lot of land here. Now, uh, the I-40, Interstate 40, of course, will take you pretty quickly out from Albuquerque out to here. It's roughly about a 40-minute drive. Uh, but the I-40 crosses through the northern part of the county. I, however, always like to differentiate land in this county by the 41. Highway 41 goes north to south of the county, and it cuts it in half east to west. All of these Estancia Ranchettes properties are over here in the eastern part of the county. And actually, if we go to satellite view and kind of zoom in here, you can see... It's not as well defined on the map as some, as some subdivisions, but it's all of this land really down here in this area and then land up here just north of the 40. So land both north and south of the 40. This is all Estancia Ranchettes. You'll notice, guys, these properties sit, it's roughly about a 10-minute drive outside of Moriarty. Moriarty, of, co of course, is... Um, well, it's a built-up little town. Uh, they've got things out here, you know, grocery supplies, gas stations, banks, post offices, things like that. So you're never too far from that sort of thing. I do want to point out to you, however, if you are buying these properties and you are curious about where's the nearest Walmart, where's the nearest Home Depot, things like that, 
I'm going to want to look over here to nearby Edgewood, which is roughly a 20 minute drive from the properties from Estancia Ranchettes. This is where you'll find, you know, the Walgreens, the Walmart Supercenter, uh, a lot of fast food restaurants, a lot of grocery stores, so on and so forth. But the point is, is that groceries and supplies are really never too far from this subdivision, however rural, however remote it may seem. Now, with that said, let's talk about this. So how did this come into existence? So like a lot of subdivisions in New Mexico, there was a developer who came along roughly around the 60s. They bought up however many thousands of acres of land this is, 10,000, I don't know. And they chopped them all up into basically all one-acre lots. Let's say 10,000 one-acre lots. And then they flew back east and they sold these lots to people who didn't know any better about what was going on in New Mexico. How much expansion was, was happening, how little expansion was happening. And basically they sold these lots, all as great investment properties. And oh my God, guys, Albuquerque is right down the street. It's expanding every day. The population's growing. We're going to have, we're going to have resorts and casinos and ski, ski resorts and hotels and mansions and blah, blah, blah. That's how they sold these properties. And so a lot of people bought land out here under those pretenses, number one. And then number two, when zoning law kind of changed about 10 years later in New Mexico, the first thing that happened was that um, the properties became less desirable, let's say, because of certain zoning law. But additionally, because all the things the developers had promised, that fantasy, that dream never came to fruition. So what you found is in you know later years, within the 70s and 80s, you have a lot of people who own land out here. They're only paying $10 a year in taxes, so they don't want to get rid of it, but they're never going to develop it, right? So you've got 10,000 separate owners. Some of them start to die. Uh, those people never deed the property properly to their children. So now you've got a lot of dead people who own land, so on and so forth. And that's how an area like this tends to uh, become sort of relegated by time, where it doesn't get built up where there is no development, where the county kind of ignores it, utility companies kind of ignore it, so on and so forth. But what you find is that when you have a region like that, there are people who gravitate to that region and who do start building out there. And they're the kind that we discussed earlier, the independent-minded types, you know, self-reliant types who can build a you know solar operation and get power to a structure they have out here. Now, I just want to point out, guys, Martinez Road, this is the... Um, I'm going to call this the main road into the subdivision. Uh, Martinez is kind of one of the, the major roads within Torrance County. Whatever the case, this is going to lead you in here. You can see up in this area, you do actually have some nice homes in this area, some that have been built up quite nicely. This is where the utilities are, and this is mostly where the utilities end, which is why after you go south, east, and north of this area, you don't really see many home sites out here. If you zoom in on the map, you'll see a few, but they're like what I described earlier, which are, you know, mobile homes, things like that. Now, back here on the listing page, guys, we do have a couple things I want to bring to your attention. Number one, plat maps. These are not great plat maps. This is what Torrance County provided. They claim they do not have all the plat maps for this uh, subdivision digitized, quote unquote. Uh, whatever the case, at the very least, this demonstrates to you that basically what you're buying out here are, or what you, you have in the subdivision are a million little, you know, one acre rectangles, okay? And then in case that point is lost on you, we also have the Google Earth representation here. So on and so forth. I do want to show you guys the photos in the gallery. The photos are taken from each of the specific properties. We send our photographer out there. He shoots 10 at one property, and then he runs over to the next one and shoots another 10. So these are properties from the land, or photos from the land itself, and will give you an excellent sense of what the property looks like out here. Now, a couple things I want to point out to you. Number one, this is what passes for roads in this region. I don't want you to mistake this for the area doesn't have legal access. Nay, it does. All the properties in this area have legal access. Uh, all of them, uh, basically, it was platted correctly. So you're never going to have to cross your neighbor's land to get to your property, number one. Uh, but number two, you are going to have roads that have kind of been barely maintained. They're like bladed dirt roads. So I would highly encourage anybody who's going to go out to buy one of these properties or even to scout one of these properties, take a larger vehicle, take an off-road capable vehicle, because you're going to encounter more quote-unquote roads that are like this than you will find well-maintained dirt gravel roads, okay? So that's first thing. Next thing. Uh, these are all uh, pretty flat pieces of land. This one, there's actually like a hillside off in the background, but they're all pretty flat pieces of land, easy to build on, easy to park on. If you're going to be out there RVing, shouldn't be difficult to get the camper out there. Shouldn't be difficult to put it on the land. Uh, you know, not too rocky, not too gravelly, so on and so forth. Uh, but as you can see, a little remote, a uh, little distant from society, et cetera. In the background of some of these, you can see some structures, some people who are living out there. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, guys, with all that said, I do want to direct your attention to some notes that we have on the subdivision up here at the top of the page. So 
All of these are pretty comprehensive explanation of what we know about this area. Let's talk next about the building, the camp, and the RVs. I said earlier that, uh, you know, it's RV friendly and relaxed zoning, and we're going to talk about exactly how friendly and how relaxed. So first off with RVs, well, let me say this. There are counties in New Mexico that have no zoning. And there are counties in New Mexico that uh, defer all their zoning questions really to the townships, the municipalities, the HOAs that exist in their respective regions. Torrance County is not that. Torrance County has pretty dense zoning ordinance. Uh, that being said, this is an area which they define as a pre-platted lands district, a rural residential pre-platted lands district, which basically means it was created before 1970, before all the zoning rules came into effect, and so they don't subject it to the same rigors as subdivisions that were created afterwards. So it gives you a lot more freedom, a lot more independence. Now, first thing, guys, RVs are acceptable for 90 days at a time or six months with a building permit. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, realistically speaking, does anybody show up on day 91 and say, hey, you have to move your RV? I highly doubt it. But we do at least want to make you aware of formally, you know, legally what the zoning ordinance says. Okay. Number one. Number two, mobile and modular homes are acceptable in this region. If you have plans for anything really unconventional, shipping container home, tiny home, what passes for unconventional in Torrance County, it's best to talk to the planning and zoning department. Additionally, when it comes to further understanding what this, quote, pre-platted lands district entails, we have this link right here. It's going to take you, if you click it, to the zoning ordinance. Now, again, this is a rural residential in a pre-platted lands district. So here's what pre-platted lands district says. Permissive uses, all permissive uses allowed, okay? Conditional uses, all conditional uses allowed. So it's a little vague. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that means that you really can do most anything you want out there. My experience with Torrance County is they probably have some additional rules that they're not enumerating here, but if you call and you talk to them, you'll learn about. At the very least, you should call and talk to them about whatever permits you need for an area like this. The rural residential part of this document goes into more detail uh really nothing too extraordinary here it just has to do with uh you know livestock uh time limits to build about skirting you know uh, mobile homes things like that so i'd encourage you guys to read over those and if you have additional questions something that's not discussed here or something you know what does it cost to get permitted for this what we have down here in the tables county contact information planning and zoning office they got a guy who works in the Torrance County Zoning Office. His name is Steve. Steve, I think, has been there longer than New Mexico has been a state. He has a savant-like knowledge of all zoning, not only with his, within his own county, but within the state. So he is an excellent resource. And I would highly encourage you, if you do have questions about property out there, talk to their zoning department. Talk to the Steve guy, okay? Next thing I want to point out to you guys. HOAs and restrictions. There are none. There's no homeowners association. And when this subdivision was built, there were no covenants or restrictions that were created with it. Additionally, that also means there are no yearly dues. So it's going to give you a lot more independence. You're not even going to have to worry about an HOA or a $50 a year fee or what you, know, what you can and cannot do with the land. That is not something that exists out there. So the most you will have to concern yourself with are just really what are the constraints of a pre-planted lands district in the Torrance County Zoning Ordinance. Additionally, let's talk about utilities, guys. So each one of these pages, um, I'm only going to put property-specific notes on these pages if it really merits it. If a property has some unique feature that all the others don't, I will write property-specific notes on here. That being said, uh, most of them seem largely interchangeable to me. And when it comes to utilities, what I find is that they're fairly much non-existent out there. Now, I will point out on our spreadsheet, hello, on our spreadsheet up here under power, we do actually have two properties that have underground utilities in the region or at the lot line, which is a surprise to me. There is shockingly good cell service in this area, according to our photographer. And that may explain it, that if there's underground utilities out there, that may explain why the cell reception is so good. Point is, he did find them at a few properties. We've notated where they are, which properties those, those are. And of course, we have photos in those photo galleries of those underground utilities. Now, quick thing, guys. How reliable are those underground utilities? Do they work? Do they service anything? If you build out there, can you get service to the thing you're building? I have no idea. This is something you really need to investigate if it's a feature that really, really, really appeals to you, okay? But point is, for the most part of the subdivision, power easily more than a mile away from each of these lots. Uh, you're going to have to rely on solar or some kind of alternative energy source, all right? Finally, guys, I want to just talk about wells and water table depth. This is not something we normally get into in our listings because I really don't like to write anything that, that would lead a buyer to believe, oh, it's definitely this, it's definitely that. 
That being said, I have read a lot about this subdivision and the numbers that keep getting quoted, and I've also had these quoted to me by realtors out there, is 150 to 300 feet in depth. There are wells in this region that range from as whatever, as shallow as 150 feet and as deep as 300 feet. Now, practically speaking, if you're going to buy a property, you're going to drill a well, it is best to call well drillers who work that area and talk to them. Hey, I'm looking to buy some land in Estancia Ranchettes. What can you tell me about the water table out there? Practically speaking, can I drill for water? How much am I likely to get? How expensive is this going to be? Those are good questions to have. We, however, just want to give you a basic sense of the number we see quoted everywhere we read about Estancia Ranchettes, 150 to 300 feet in depth, okay? Anyway, uh, furthermore, guys, we have some resources down here on the table. I want to remind you of, if you have been to our listing pages before, we always include the name of the local power company that services the region. Click that link. It'll take you to their website. Hello, their website, where you can investigate more, particularly if you do want to get power extended out to the subject property. That's probably not an option out here. That's probably, probably prohibitively expensive in this region. But at the very least, you can talk to these people about the underground utilities out there and ask, you know, practically speaking, can I actually get some kind of utilities to my home site? Additionally, guys, right here, New Mexico State Engineer. This is the government entity that controls well rights and, uh, or excuse me, water rights and well permits within the state. So if you're going to drill a well on here, eventually you're going to have to contact this office. It's a good thing to, in advance of the purchase of the property, do a little bit of research with them. Call, ask whatever questions you have about that sort of thing. Anything that a well driller, you know, can't answer, maybe this government office can but at the very least, they can talk to you about the permitting fees, the cost of actually getting water rights to a property, so on and so forth. Now, guys, if these are properties you are interested in purchasing, we have two options up here. We have the cash option when you click this button, and we have the terms option when you click this button. Terms, of course, $250 down, $100 a month for 24 months. Let me be clear. We have down here, under payment options, we have a copy of one of our generic land contracts, a generic version of one of our standard land contracts. You click this, it's going to bring this thing up. You're going to be able to read exactly the terms we are going to ask you to sign if you do go the route of down payment, monthly payment, okay? And what you will see in this contract, what we have in all of our land contracts is 90 days, same as cash. So the cash price on this is $1,500 plus a $150 doc prep fee, $1,650 total. If you could come up with that in 90 days, you should go for this, okay? If you think, well, I can't come up with 1650 in 90 days, but I could probably have it in five months, here's how much you're going to have to pay if you pay in five months, 1800 so on and so forth. The point is, guys, we offer only prepayment incentives, no prepayment penalties, and, of course, 90 days, same as cash. The contract will enumerate not only the, the payoff amounts at various times throughout the duration of the, uh, of the payment plan, but it will also enumerate some other terms, like the taxes become the buyer's responsibility, the forthcoming taxes, not previous taxes, obviously, become the buyer's responsibility, so on and so forth, guys. So if you read through this, it'll give you a very good sense of what you will be asked to sign. For the record, guys, if you buy the property for cash, we deed it into your name immediately. If you go the land contract route, we deed it into your name after all the payments have been made. Uh, of course, if you do go this route, you can begin using the land immediately, uh, much as you can begin using your, your house or your car when you take out a loan and you get a mortgage on a house, you can move into the house. Much like that, you could begin using the land immediately. So with all that said, guys, to exercise either one of these options, come up here, click the buy now button. This is the cash one. Click that, it'll take you to this page. We're gonna ask you for a couple pieces of information. Legal name for deed, tax address, agree to the terms of service, and on the next page, you're gonna enter credit or debit card information where you will purchase the property. We own these properties, guys. So once you give us the money, you are now the new owner. As far as we are concerned, practically speaking, there's a process it takes about three weeks before the recorded deed is in your hands. Within 24 hours of your purchase, we will have a copy of the deed to you in an email. Once you approve it, we autograph it, notarize it, mail it off to the county toot suite, county records it, then they forward it on to you. So it will be about three weeks before that's in your hands. Uh, but again, we own it. You give us money. As far as we're concerned, you can go out there, begin camping, begin building, begin doing whatever the hell you want. Uh, it is yours to do with as you please. You have paid for it. That's number one, guys. Number two. Up here, payments. If you elect to do the payment option, 250 down, 100 a month, so on and so forth, click that buy now button. It will take you to this secure checkout page. It looks, by the way, because these things are always awkwardly written, like we're asking for 350 at checkout. We're not, only 250 at checkout. 100 reoccurs every 30 days. But basically, we'll ask for all the same information here. Agree to the terms of service, enter credit and debit card information on the next page, and congratulations, you have placed the down payment. Uh, as with the deed, 
Uh, we will have copies of our land contracts to our land contract buyers within 24 hours via email. And uh, yeah, anyway, there you go, guys. That is uh, what we know about the Estancia Ranches properties. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment here on YouTube. Shoot us an email, support at HemingwayLand.com, or give us a call, 702-919-7170. Uh, again, I hope these properties appeal to you guys. I hope these, uh, fit the bill for some of you people who like that kind of leave me alone land. Uh, I believe there is uh, a lot to like about these as far as the RV friendly, as far as the relaxed zoning, no covenants, no restrictions, no HOAs, no dues, so on and so forth. Uh, and so if that appeals to you, I believe these may be the right fit for you. With all that said, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.